this is Pallavi from the studio today and you are watching Kumari Pallavi 90. Guest for today's evening is an amazing personality who is from the field of IT, who works as a cloud developer and who is very passionate about photography. He has his work, work excellence in the field of macro photography and wildlife photography. Without any further ado, let's get started. Hello and welcome Mr. Soma Sekhar to this session of interview. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you so much, Pallavi. Uh, I feel like this is a, my uh, one of my achievements. So this is my first interview. I am a bit curious and anxiety. So uh, thank you for giving this opportunity. Most welcome. So uh, beginning with the first question, we would like to know about yourself a little bit. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Soma Shekhar. Uh, recently, I completed my graduation in the year of 2021. So, uh, so I, I am stepping uh, in IT field. Uh, so, as of now, I completed one year as a cloud developer in IT field. So, uh, as well as I managed uh, my wildlife photography too. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, congratulations on your one year journey as a cloud developer. So. Thank you. Yeah. So, could you give us some insights into your work as a cloud developer? Means, what type of responsibilities do you have to perform there? Yeah, uh, as a cloud developer, we need to manage those uh, cloud servers and we need to maintain the data. We need to integrate and migrate and we need to maintain the data from one server to another servers, like one cloud to another cloud. So uh, I'm doing uh, these type of works. Um, uh, so and I also learned so many, uh, so many cloud technologies. So I'm learning with that. So uh and learning and implementing then implementing that in my uh real life projects so that's it oh, okay so could you give uh could you share any storytelling funniest or anything from your hostel days during a b-tech hostel days like uh there is so many uh funny days in my hostel days uh, so like uh, one day like we all uh, all my friends <laughs> have a fight with messing charts like uh, you know you know right uh, we have a mess at every hostels yeah uh, <laughs> that time like so we don't have like some proper uh, we don't know uh, we don't have that proper food facility so we fight with them and uh, after that day we went to the uh, all the all my friends to the principal <laughs> we got scored like we got suspended like one week like that this is like so many funny uh, so this is the most funniest thing so i can say okay in this funny so is there any uh, means uh, fact that drove you towards uh, in the uh, bta towards wildlife photography is there any specific uh, incident behind those? Yes, there is uh, so many incidents uh, which I am looking into the wildlife. So actually, uh, basically, I am from a uh, farmer's background. Uh, my both parents are uh, my parents are for farmers actually. So I know the bonding between the uh, animals and humans. Actually, so they are very friendly with domestic animals. Uh, I know the bonding. If you say anything with that uh, pet animals, like domestic animals, like dogs, uh, cows, everything, they will uh, they will listen. They will listen human words, and uh, like that, they're very very honestly uh, towards humans also. Like that, uh, like that wildlife also same. Uh, if you know, uh, I think there is one person, Kevin Richardson. Uh, he is from South Africa. He is living with uh, you know wild animals like lions, leopards. Uh, hyenas by communicating with their body lang uh, body language and so there is no no harm in that wildlife animals so if you did if you did not uh, disturb their environment so they did not do any harm to us and and the, and uh, when i started uh, when i started my uh, btech so i start I'm uh, I'm actually I'm a naturist okay so I am very uh, interested in sunsets and sun rises all the like you know nature nature things so I start I started following in Instagram some nature pages nature photography like BBC Earth uh, these are the things which showcase of what's going on in nature so I'm 
i uh, i notice that uh, some of the wildlife animals got dead in night uh, in roads in in roads and some of the uh, uh, animals got killed in uh, roads and some of most of the uh, gang of uh, monkeys got dead because of uh, humans giving some uh, food to them because uh, it got food poison food poisonings to them and uh, the all the monkeys got died so i i feel like uh, you know that, that is very uh, like <laughs> i felt like sad so i decided i need to um, conserve the uh, wildlife and uh, i need to uh, showcase the uh, wildlife uh, habitats and what's their what's their lifestyle to the uh, society okay and we really have respect for your parents and i think their hard work has invested in you and so you are today so recently in um, madhya pradesh in kulu national park this uh, cheetahs got reintroduced so what are your yes, thoughts yes. regarding well, the reintroduction of cheetahs after 70 years in india are you looking forward yes, to yeah. go and photograph them yes yes really uh, that was really great uh, that uh, cheetahs seven cheetahs got released into the wildlife sanctuaries by uh, narendra modi so that was a great uh, great work so so do you think that uh, african cheetahs will get adjusted to the uh, weather and climate of india for their survival yes uh, because so uh, if we keep that cheetahs in uh, cages like bones uh, like uh, even uh, they also have the separate ecosystem they need to live freely so they they also need freedom right so that's uh, that's so that's really important okay so we also hope that this cheetahs prog- program of the project get successful so now i would like to ask you that what makes you uh, means consistent what makes you focused on your goals what makes you means because uh, i am always uh, learning something in uh, photography like so i am very curious about uh, capturing and documenting their lifestyles and their habitats so that makes me uh, very uh, you know uh, keep going under my uh, passion and i'm so study on that so so how did macro photography happen to you so uh, macro photography uh, when i am in uh, btech first year uh, i decided to start my uh, uh, one day i am uh, having my cup of tea uh, besides me uh, there is a one small flower tree so i captured uh, one of the leaf uh, with my mobile so it came really very good uh, if you go to the, my instagram profile uh, that was uh, my first picture <laughs> so it came very well so i started i need to post in instagram so i need to start my uh, photography but i i think about i uh, i don't have a good camera every photographers have a good camera uh, so i think like that but later i know uh, that gear is really doesn't matter for photography so i started with my surrounding places Mm. so i captured some uh, nature sunset sunrises so after that uh, one day uh, i founded one of one page uh, uh, pavi he is from uh, kerala he is doing uh, macro photography very well uh, i am impressed with uh, him photography macro photography so i decided i also uh, want to start uh, macro photography because uh, because uh, in my surroundings there is so many paddy paddy fields like yeah. there is so many farming areas so i can easily find the insects so i can i need to start, i decided i need to start macro photography so uh, i contacted him in instagram so uh, i asked about what you, what gear you are using for macro photography like that so he gave me the uh, all the inputs so uh, i invested uh, like 1000 rupees on my uh, macro lens so i i uh, buy one macro lens so i started uh, capturing all the macros and and their habitats like that. you are really doing a great job in case of macro photography now we will just talk about one of your peak that i have um, found while scrolling okay. what was the story behind this peak 
pollution this big uh, this is a very uh, close look of uh, dragonfly uh, like uh, one day morning i i went for a walk uh, because you know uh, the every almost my uh, all the uh, macro photography pictures is uh, captured in morning times only so i got very uh, good pictures in morning so uh, one day morning Uh, i went for macro photography uh, early morning like uh, seven o'clock uh, this time so i uh, i i look this uh, dragonfly so uh, if i go very close to that uh, uh, dragonfly uh, it it doesn't go anywhere <laughs> actually it supported me <laughs> it cooperates me so i take very close picture of them so uh, it's like uh, then i uh, i adjusted little bit uh, lighting and color grading so then i post processed it so i then i posted in instagram so i got uh, like you know a uh, good uh, response on that so. the next pick is this one could you share the story behind this curious pick yes yes uh, this is uh, <laughs> it's remembering all the days <laughs> with my parents so like so uh, i we have a paddy field so that is about to end like we need to uh, cut that paddy field uh, so me and my uh, parents uh, cutting that paddy field so at that time i saw that uh, inset that is very small inset actually so i uh, immediately i take my <laughs> always my macro lens in my pocket only so i immediately take my <laughs> macro lens i uh, set up with my camera so i captured that <laughs> that was really nice one uh, while uh, as a cloud computer in what type of projects are have you means are you working so so uh, now where is uh, all the cloud storage is uh, very costly because uh, you know if you keep it physically with all your data it there is a uh, more chances to lose your data all the all your company data so every organization is decided to store their uh, data in clouds Uh, so it would be uh, very helpful uh, if you store if you store your data in clouds uh, it will it will be uh, stay in any uh, like you can extract in any year like in in next uh, future 20 years also you can uh, extract the data in from cloud so so that uh, by the way the cloud storage is also like you know a uh, bit high because the demand is also very high on cloud so everyone is looking forward to the cloud because it would be easier there is no physical uh, hard disk we, need, we don't want to keep the hard disk we just want to like you know buy one cloud and store all the data into that so this is a uh, main thing so. okay. revisiting your childhood what did you love okay. to do the most favorite work to do <laughs> uh, i need to skip my uh, school <laughs> and, okay. and play the whole day with my friends like that what type of future goals have you set both in your professional as well as your patient field uh, so uh, as of now uh, i'm uh, like i'm earning money so i'm uh, i want to decide to uh, in, in i want to decide to invest some of the money to the wildlife photography so i need to maintain as well as my uh, profession and passion uh, so in future uh, i am like uh, i want to become a uh, great uh, wildlife photographer and mentor so because uh, in south there is uh, there is so many people want to become wildlife photographer but uh, they don't have a, a proper guidance so uh, i just want to be a good mentor and a good wildlife photographer so so all the best for your future endeavors what would be your piece of advice to the young aspirants who are willing to come to your field so uh, my advice to the aspiring photographers uh, i think uh, don't uh, compare with uh, your uh, pictures with others so every uh, every photographer have unique style so the my way of style is uh, documenting that uh, their animals lifestyle and habitats what they are doing every day i need to capture uh, like Uh, like that so every photographer have their unique style so uh, any beginners so uh, don't uh, the gate doesn't matter 
uh, please stop complaining your gears uh, get out of, get out of your comfort zone and make your frames so and this is a first tip i am uh, i am giving to the upcoming photographers and the second is uh, composition and storytelling is a soul of photography so uh, uh, i am not uh, like i am not uh that kind of anxiety person if you anything uh, in front of my uh eye uh, animal or bird i don't want to take uh immediately that picture like that so i am first first we need to observe the uh, animal behavior that any bird behavior how they are behaving how they are uh, like uh, uh like responding to the uh uh humans like that we need to first observe the behavior of the any wildlife animal so so that we we can uh, proceed with them and the third the third tip i am giving to the uh, beginners uh, like beginner photographers uh, like if you want to become a good uh, wildlife photographer uh, you you should start visualizing frames uh, uh from inside not from your uh a camera okay you need to uh, start visualizing from your inside uh, what you are going to uh, tell with your uh, frames uh, we need uh, so like that so you have once told me that uh, you work from 12 to 9 so is it hectic for you that's a my shift timing okay. so, <laughs> so is it a regular shift timing yeah this is my uh, regular shift timing because uh, my project is us based project so the times will be differ to the indian employees and us employees so uh, like that so okay so is it different to work in a us project from that of indian <laughs> at the beginning uh, like i am like a uh, bit <laughs> like i am not able to uh, like take that uh, us uh, accent their fluency but after one week i got uh, like you know i am also uh, addict, uh, like uh, adapted to the their uh, language their uh, and uh, like accent fluency i can understand i will also uh, communicate with them so that's fine uh, now it's everything is good okay. i'm working with uh, uh, my actually my clients is a blue cross blue shield uh, this is a uh, one of the great uh, like medical services so we uh, we are working with them right now okay you are working from home work from home yeah uh, actually i work, uh, work from home yeah do you have any plans to go and settle in us as you are already into the us project like uh, right now i don't have any uh, plans to go us because uh, in india we got you know uh, i think i feel like that personally uh, i don't i am not comfortable in uh, us because i am more comfortable in india because i can find more uh, you know um, national parks and yeah. I, don't, i don't know how, how can i say that because uh, like i am okay with india <laughs> i'm not going to go anywhere Yes. I, there is so many things to explore in india so uh, i don't want to go in. that's really impressive of you to be stay connected to your roots yes because uh, i don't want to go away from my parents also i need to <laughs> take care of them also so i don't want to go to the us and so like yeah, that's really appreciated you also have interest in traveling So, what type of destinations yes, yes. are in your bucket list? Ah, uh, I know. I travel like um, my surrounding places. Like uh, basically, I'm from uh, Tirupati area. I'm from Tirupati area. You know, right? Tirumala, Lord Balaji. So yeah. there is some uh, very uh, historical places. Is the uh, I visited uh, so many uh, so many of the places, and I documented them. And I have another Instagram page too for. Uh, traveling and my lifestyle so i am uh, i am posting all the my traveling videos and my lifestyle videos in there in that account so i traveled um, like uh, mysore uh, as of now mysore uh, pondicherry uh, i am exploring like you know uh, bangalore because i am uh, right now in bangalore so i am exploring the um, 
nearest areas what is uh, what's the uh, nearest areas in bangalore karnataka i am exploring karnataka right now so i am planning uh, to more uh, places so let's see <laughs> because i started my journey uh, so i hope it will be a uh, great okay so as you have told about your parents as farmers so what type of yes. farming do you practice at home and in which area is your farm land uh what type of uh, farming uh, tomato a uh, paddy uh, and we have a mango farm also and coconuts um and mirchi uh, based on seasons we can uh, farming like this it's more for vegetables and all yes vegetables okay uh, is there any success of you to uh, give some inputs into your farmland in future Mm. or you are okay like, with your it field <laughs> but i know i know the farming uh, i am i am also very uh, interested and love towards farming because uh, even i also did farming even even now also when i go to the home uh, i did farming so that's uh, because uh, farming uh, farming is a um, i think in next future generations uh, the farming is a number one uh, occupation yeah. i think because nowadays uh, you know everyone is suffering with um, like even uh, even small babies are getting sugars and diabetics so like like that so everyone is looking forward an uh, organic uh, food so i think uh, i personally feel like that so farming is the next um, you know uh, breaking uh, profession Yeah, indeed, organic farming is already in trend, and it's helping yes, people yes. both economically and ecologically. Yes, so, yes. Well, uh, Mr. Soma Sekhar, uh, we are to the end of this session, and I must say that you are truly okay. an amazing and inspiring personality. It was great interacting. And thank with you me. so much. and thank you so much i would like to thank you also because you are doing a great job and uh, you know you are introducing to the world so many uh, you know young photographers you are increasing the this type of talents because you recently interviewed one of my brother uh, that is uday mas reddy he is we both are from same uh, village so like i am really uh, glad to you like because you are increasing this type of uh, you know uh, talent so i am so glad Uh, my pleasure and thank you so much for your valuable and kind words uh, sorry ha so audience this is soma sekhar i read it from the field of wildlife photography it hope you like today's interview i will be back soon with another eminent personality very soon till then thank you so much for watching goodbye for now yeah thank you everyone